and welcome back to my nail corner. Today we are going to get into a mani using skip, <laughs> skippy, skinny dip in dips. Okay, it's going to be one of those videos, so hang in there. Um, this is, was my first time using this brand and I wanted to share it with you guys. I have jelly tips on and you can see they are grown out a bit, but I hope today showcases for you guys that they can hang on for a while and be grown out for a while and still look awesome under dip powder. I'll get to talking more about that in just a minute here, but those are the two beautiful colors swatched out that Mary from Skinny Dip and Dips sent over to me. I'm going to be using Royal Dips Dip Base today. Uh, Royal Dips sent me over some dips and dip liquids recently. I showcased a Manny using um, her dip powder on my Instagram, so if you're not on Instagram, hop on over there and check that out. But I've been reaching for her dip liquids um, with confidence. They perform really nicely, and I will talk a little bit more about those as we go. Um, but I'm going to get into dipping into this gorgeous light blue shimmer. Um, we've been having quite the winter here in Washington. I've talked about it already. It hasn't snowed probably in a week now and it's been raining and in like the 40s so we're finally melting out but there was so much snow that we still have like dirty piles of snow everywhere from like snow plows and stuff so I'm kind of ready for a fresh start a fresh start <laughs> and then it can snow some more okay maybe I should stick to talking about nails so look at how beautifully that applied it's an, a light color but totally like pigmented and opaque in one dip which is so nice and then shimmer oh my gosh you guys know I love a shimmer so that had my heart right away just that it was a shimmer that applied so beautifully so nice and pigmented like no complaints there and it's also a, a testament to the dip liquids you can see there's like no patchiness no missed spots no like goopy spots or anything it's a nice like thin applying uh, dip base but not runny in any way the brush was um i was going to use the word stiff but that's not what i mean it's like um firm and like easy to control i think um, so that's just my personal opinion but definitely if you're shopping royal dips check out her dip liquids by the way royal dips is a canadian brand skinny dip and dips which is where the powders are from are a u.s based brand so i always want to make that clear because some people are shopping you know internationally and want to know if it's a canadian brand um, or where the company ships from and so i like to let you guys know and it's also something to keep in mind because when you're shopping a canadian brand website sometimes their pricing is in canadian so you want to convert that to whatever your currency is so for us with the us dollar our dollar goes a lot further when you're shopping canadian brands so check that out Anyway, I'm going in for my second dip of this dip powder. Again, applied beautifully and smoothly, and I thought it was a really pretty color. And it was, I think when I started talking about the snow, I was about to say this was like the perfect winter, like snow, Elsa vibes, Manny. And then I got all distracted talking about the weather. But anywho, so I'm gonna do two dips of this color and then we're gonna do a glitter ombre now that glitter i'll talk a little bit more about when i get to it but it's not just your basic glitter so hang in there and i'll be back in just a second So fiercely frosted. Isn't she 
pretty. So it's like a glitter foil mixed base, I would say. Um, there are definitely foils in this mix and then there are some chunky glitters as well. So I'm going to go ahead and get into a couple of little ombre accent nails. I love a glitter ombre tip. That's just, I just love it. Every time I do it, I'm like, why don't I do this with every Manny? Because it's like my fave. So you're gonna go ahead and apply your dip base to the entire nail. And then I use a, um, what's it called? An eyeshadow application brush. These are wet and wild and they're like a dollar on Amazon. If you check out my Amazon storefront below, I always try to link the tools that I purchase on Amazon in my Amazon storefront. I do get a little commission when you shop those links. It's probably like a couple cents, but you know, it adds up and it helps me keep doing this. So I just tap, tap, tap on that brush after it's loaded with the glitter to where I want it. And then I like to use a little spoon to pour over my clear. Now, the clear I have right there is Sparkle & Co Clear. I have probably 10 different jars of clear, most of which I've contaminated with glitter because I don't follow my own rules. But pouring it over like this will help you keep from getting that glitter into your jar. So try to do that. You don't waste very much, it's just like a little bit, but um, it's worth it if you want to not contaminate your clear with glitter or if you don't have enough different clears that you can keep one pure and then one for glitters. Just a tip. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that to the middle nail also. Same thing, apply base to the entire nail, load up your brush with that glitter and then tap, tap, tap to your liking. There's no exact science to this. It's a little different every time, depending on where your glitter falls, how your nail is angled, etc., etc. But it's all about what you like. These are your nails and you're gonna have to look at them on your hand. So just tap to where you like them. If you get a little bit of glitter down in like the clear area of the nail, then you can use like a, a toothpick or an orange wood stick or a precision tool like I use to kind of push those glitters out of the way before you pour over the clear, but that's totally up to you. I don't generally fuss with it unless it's like a big piece or just something went awry. I usually just kind of leave it where it falls. So filling in with clear is kind of helping keep a level surface because if you apply glitter to the tip of your nail and then you don't put any dip powder on the base of your nail, you're gonna have like a weird uneven surface. So I always do clear or like a really light, like a French pink is another option to the base of the nail if you want that kind of clear look. You could totally do the glitter tip over like that blue for instance, that's an option as well. But I really like the clear base on a glitter tip nail. I just think it's, I just think it's really pretty. And I think a glitter tip, like an ombre tip like that, elongates the nail so if you're somebody with short nails um, this is totally a look I recommend because I just feel like it's really attractive on a shorter nail it elongates it a little bit and I just I think it's so cute um, I think it's Manny's by Katie I hope I got that right she has little shorties and she has the most gorgeous Manny's all the time over on Instagram so I'll link her below check her out because I've seen her do little glitter tips. You know, Manny's by Megan does it too. She rocks like the shorties with a glitter tip. And I just think, oh, it's so pretty. It makes me want to chop my nails off every time I see their, their posts. And then I remind myself that I feel like my, my hands look like little toddler's hands if I cut my nails off short. But believe you me, I've done it. If you're on my Instagram, you've seen that recently I did have a couple of shorty posts because I was kind of into it for a minute over Christmas. We had company from out of town and I was real busy and I just couldn't maintain things. And so I took the jelly tips off. I dipped my little shorty natural nails. I kind of enjoyed it. I really liked it. I just don't feel like they photograph well. And I know that sounds super, super superficial, but you know, this does get posted on Instagram and the point is to um, be able to, I, I have fun doing it and part of it's for me, but some of this is really to help promote other brands and get their name out there and I just want to represent them well. So hopefully that makes sense, my ramblings on. So I'll get questions about this, so I'll let you know. That right there is called a color switch. It is linked in my Amazon storefront and it is an awesome tool for cleaning off your ombre brushes, especially if you only want to have 
have like one brush you're like I don't want to have six brushes like one for glitter and one for pigments and one for lighter colors if you just want to use one brush um, you a color switch is awesome because you just do what I just did there like rub the brush on there and it gets all the glitters off or all the pigment whatever you're working with so I do highly recommend a color switch for cleaning off your brushes um, they are intended for makeup brushes I guess I don't really wear makeup but um, we can use them for whatever we want right so now I am placing some of those chunkier glitters when you do a glitter ombre on the tip of your nail a lot of times the brush only not only but mostly will pick up the finer glitters and flakes and things so you get to have the option of placing more chunky glitters if you want to and I wanted to so I did so now we are going to cap in clear as per usual I will run through really quick why I like to cap in clear and there are lots of reasons so clear cap is great to protect any design or pigment or whatever you just did the glitters on your nail from filing when you file into a colored glitter it is you okay I just got a phone call that cut me off a, a glitter is usually silver on the inside is what I was about to say additionally if you do any stamping or any design on your nail if you create a French Manny look you don't want to file away the design that you just created so clear is going to protect that it is also going to keep your activator from getting contaminated and that's something that I really like when I reach for my activator I know I'm not going to get a random glitter onto a solid nail or pigment from like a red nail onto a white nail because your own your activator is only ever touching the clear dip powder so there are a lot of reasons for a clear cap that I like to use it but it's totally a personal preference and it's up to you if you are going to clear cap I do recommend having a jar of clear that is specifically for glitter nails like that one and then one that is specifically for solids and that way you don't cross contaminate your glitters into your solids so now I am using a stiff bristled brush you can use a toothbrush or whatever you have on hand to get any of that excess clear off that is going to help your clear look clear so if you've ever had a clear um, look bubbly or leave like white specks on the nail you you need to do, just do a little bit more brushing off of that clear and then make sure you really saturate your nails in activator so your first layer of activator is to harden the dip powder on your nails I like to press down the glitters like you just saw it helps give a nice flush surface to those glitter nails and then I like to do a little second application of activator just to make sure that I've thoroughly saturated those so now I want to introduce you guys to my newest e-file melody susie sent over this beautiful melody susie sparkle i think it's called a sparkle some sparkle plus i'll look it up and link it down below how beautiful is this yes right there it says sparkle plus so i always take a quick look through the user manual see if there's anything different that i need to know uh, this i like that it has all the different bits that come with the uh, e-file and tells you what they're for which is fantastic and then it'll give you all the specs on the e-file what all the ports do and all that sort of stuff so if you are new to it definitely check out your user manuals and then there is warranty information in there as well so um, check that out if you get a new e-file look at the little user manual maybe tuck that in a drawer somewhere but this is what came with the e-file so you have your charging AC adapter which plugs in right there you have the beautiful handset or er, like um, base itself I love that green that it's in uh, it came with some additional bits which was really nice I would use that probably for a removal bit because it's a little bit more coarse and then this is a ceramic bit that's really nice it's a little bit of a finer grit but be careful with those edges they can be sharp so be careful around your skin and then it came with this batch of um, diamond bits as well as um, oh my goodness what's that called a mandrel bit I think where the sanding bands go on which is fantastic I love those sanding bands for um, buffing the inside of my jelly tips before I place them so you've got some really nice narrow bits some cuticle cleanup bits and so on so those again were all detailed in the user manual what to use them for so it comes with this nice stand to keep the handset from rolling off your desk which is awesome it also always comes with what you just saw it's like a like a pin to hold in there and you do want to have something in your um, 
what's it called, in the handset at all times. So either leave one of those in there or leave a bit in there. It just helps keep from getting like dust and gunk and things like that in there. This wasn't plugged in when it came out of the box, but obviously that is where your handset plugs in. The little switch on the top was a forward and reverse. And then if it just sits in the middle, then it's kind of in a neutral position. And then it's paused, which I really like a pause feature. So see, just like that, it would be on pause. So then you just turn the dial and it turns your speed up. There is a little arrow on the screen when it's going one direction or the other um, to tell you if it's going in forward or reverse, which is really nice also. So very clear, very concise. See the little arrow, the circle arrow on the left there? That's telling you forward or reverse. And then it goes all the way up to 35,000 RPMs. I've never needed to use an e-file at that speed, but like, hey, you do you. So I was really impressed with how quiet this e-file is. It's so quiet. And I would have put in actual audio, but I had kids in the house running around and so it wouldn't have seemed quiet. But you'll see it jumped a slight bit when I turned it on because the power get went to it. But I'm turning that up and up and up there's no vibration. Do you see that handset? It is not budging and it is so quiet. It's a really nice handset. It's like a nice weight, but um, nice and narrow. So it fits really nicely in your hand. And then you can see there's a clip on the side of that. Um, I keep wanting to call it a base, but I'm not, that's not the word I'm looking for. Anyway, there is a clip on the side there that you could put this into. If you're storing it in a drawer, that's what I would do with the handset. Just stick it in that little, that little clip on the side. So beautiful, beautiful e-file. Check out the links below if you are in the market for one. I highly recommend. So now I have filed off camera, smoothed everything out, and I am going to go in with my dip liquids to finish off this mani. So if you are going to use a dip top coat, you need to apply activator after you buff and file. So your first bout of activator, it activated the base and the powder together and hardened it so that you could file and buff. This layer of activator is to cure your top coat. So same liquid, this activator, but two different purposes. So you have to reapply it after your buffing and filing or your top coat will not cure and it will break your heart because you will apply it over a gorgeous finished mani and then it will stay like gummy and it will not be glossy and shiny. So after I've applied my activator, this is real time, I just wait a couple seconds and then I take a lint-free wipe and just wipe off the surface of the nail. You're not really removing the activator, you're just removing excess activator because you don't want a ton of extra activator on the surface because you don't want it getting into your dip top coat. Because we just talked about activator cures dip top coat, so the last thing you want is activator getting into the bottle of dip top coat. That is why you see right now the brush is touching activator on my nail. So I give it a swipe on a paper towel before putting it back into the bottle. And that is to protect my dip top coat from being contaminated with activator. So dip top coat is applied in two coats, not one, not three. It has to be two. I'm not a scientist. I don't know why, but that's how it works best. So your first coat should be two to three quick swipes over the nail. That is to keep like as little contact between that brush and the activator as possible and then go right back around with your second coat and this coat can be more thorough so you can make sure you get all the way to the cuticle line around to the sidewalls and then cap that free edge if you really want your mani to be nice and secure and long lasting you just want a really good seal all the way around so again first coat is two to three quick swipes then go back to your pinky and start back around. If I'm doing two hands at the same time, like most normal people probably are, then I do one hand of top coat first and then do the other. That keeps the timing just right for me. So I go pinky to thumb and then back pinky to thumb. And that timing works out just right for me to get a glossy top coat every time. So after you finish this step, you're gonna wait, like usually the dry down time is about two minutes. I 
I sometimes risk it and touch it sooner and typically it's dry but there have been times I have messed up a beautiful mani and had to buff off that top coat and start over. So if you do mess up your top coat by touching it too soon, you can take a buffing block, buff it smooth, get rid of as much of that top coat as possible and then apply activator to that nail, wipe it off and then do your two dip top coat layers again. So there is a way to fix it but trust me and just wait the two minutes or so before you touch it so now i've waited i am ready for my cuticle oil as you can see because goodness um, my cuticles are all dried out and then there's like just kind of residual product that i find the cuticle oil really helps break down so this is my candy skincare cuticle oil it is always my go-to i'm obsessed with the body butters from candy skincare right now and i'm currently waiting for a package that has their new lip balm in it oh i'm so excited so definitely check out candy skincare i have a discount in the description box below if you need some to hydrate and keep your cuticles healthy i hope you guys enjoyed this thanks for being here and i will see you in my next vid bye now